guys, welcome back to chapter 11 of David Walliams' Codename Bananas. Today we're on chapter 11, titled Bang. Now make sure you pay close attention to the story because you do have questions to answer at the end. Remember, complete sentences start with a capital, end with a period. You're restating the question. Let's get started with chapter 11, Bang. <clears throat> no! screamed Eric. Jumping between Gertrude and the rifle, he knocked the gun out of Batter's hands. As he did so, bang! A shot rang out. The bullet exploded through the snack bar roof. Woo! Woo! cried the gorilla. Gertrude was terrified and charged at Batter. Their heads clonked together. Doing! Both fell to the ground, knocked out cold. What on earth do you think you were doing, boy? shouted Sid. I was just trying to save Gertrude, protested Eric. You could have gotten yourself killed. Killed! I'm sorry. Ah, uh, now we're in deep doop doo doo. Eric looked down at the pair, sprawled on the ground. Do you think they're all right? he asked. Gertrude or Batter? asked Sid. Well, the boy hesitated. I was thinking of the gorilla. Come on, we need to sort both of them out. That is what they did. They found a large wheelbarrow normally used for ferrying dung around the zoo. Ladies first, announced Sid with a great effort. They lifted Gertrude into it. She was wheeled back to her cage, which they thought was the safest place for her despite the damage to the roof. First Sid and Eric untied the rope. Then they attached it to the top of the roof. Next, using the branches of the tree nearby as a pulley, they hoisted the top of the cage back into position. Then, to stop it from falling down again, they tied it off around the trunk of the tree. To hide the damage, they put some hay and twigs around the top of the cage so that you couldn't see where the roof had, begun, be, had been torn off. Finally, they wheeled Gertrude into her cage, gently lifted her out of her wheelbarrow, and set her down on the bed of straw. The gorilla snored away. She looks peaceful when she sleeps, remarked Eric. Let's get out of here before she comes to, replied Sid. That was a nasty bump on the head. She might wake up in a foul mood. Gertrude's never in a foul mood. No, but we'd be safest on the other side of this cage. Come on. The boy gave his friend a goodnight kiss on her forehead, just like his mom and dad used to do to him. Sleep tight, he said. By the time they were out of the cage, dawn was rising over the zoo. With the sun up, Eric and Sid could see the plumes of thick black smoke rising up all over London. This must have been one of the worst nights of bombing in the war so far. Night after night, building by building, London was being flattened. If the explosions of the bombs didn't bring death and destruction, then the blazes would ca would they caused would. Many of the buildings in London would now be nothing but a blackened shell. Looking up at the sky above inked with smoke, Eric felt lucky to be alive. Although he was meant to be tucked in his bed at his grandma's house, perhaps the zoo was the safest place to be, after all. Now Eric and Sid had to act fast. Soon, more and more people who worked at the zoo would be arriving. They would be asking questions as to why the night watchman was sprawled out on the ground. When they finally got back to the snack bar to deal with batter, the man and his rifle were nowhere to be seen. He's gone, called out Eric. Oh, no, I haven't, said Batter, as he stepped out of the shadows. You two are in ginormous trouble. Chapter 12, Deep Doo-Doo After being locked in Batter's shed for what seemed like hours, the pair were marched to the zoo director's office. It was an oak-paneled room with oil paintings and busts of the previous zoo directors. The list of bad things Sid and Eric had done was long. As Sir Frederick Frown listed them one by one, all the boy could think of about was how really he needed to pee. Waking into the zoo, doing the night, bringing a child into the zoo without authorization, attacking a member of staff, wetting a dangerous animal roam the zoo at night, and last but not least, Breaking into the snack ball and stealing raisins. Eric couldn't help but smirk at Frown's posh way of pronouncing words. The ambulance! Thundered Frown. Boy, you deserve a good old-fashioned thwashing. 
And why do you smell of penguin? Eric's clothes were still damp. Oh, I fell in the penguin pool. Fell in the penguin pool? What a ridiculous thing to do! You could have drowned! Oh, I despair. I really do. Where, pray, are your mother and father in all this? The boy hung his head. Nothing seemed funny anymore. Both died in the war, sir. The man softened. I am very sorry to hear that. Thank you, sir. But goodness gracious, this is not good. Not good at all. Orphan or not, this is the second time you have been in trouble at my zoo in 24 hours. Sorry, sir. Mm. But it's not you I blame for all this. You have been led astray by your, this man here. The man jabbed his finger into Sid's direction. Now it was the old man's turn to hang his head. Sorry, sir, muttered Sid. Sorry isn't good enough. You have been a zookeeper here at the zoo for longer than anyone. Not once, but twice you have broken that bond of trust. You have no right to be in the zoo doing the night. I was only trying to take care of the animals during the bombing raid. It's not your job to do that, Pratt. Batta is here. Corporal Batta, if you please, sir, corrected the corporal, who was standing in the corner with a smug look on his face. Frown rolled his eyes. Corporal Batta, here has the orders of how to deal with animals who escape during the night. And you prevented him from doing that. Imagine if we had a gorilla running Wyatt through the streets of London. Here it began imagining the scene. Gertrude scaling Nelson's column. Gertrude reading a newspaper on a bench in Hyde Park. Gertrude clinging on the hands of the clock face of Big Ben. Gertrude waving from the doorway of 10 Downing Street, as if she were the Prime Minister. Gertrude standing on the downed roof of St. Paul's Cathedral. Gertrude driving a London taxi cab. Gertrude feeding the pigeons in Trafalgar Square. Gertrude taking tickets on the tube. Gertrude sipping afternoon tea at the Super Posh Claridge Hotel. Gertrude playing croquet with King George the Sixth in the gardens of Buckingham Palace. The boy smiled to himself. A gorilla running Wyatt seemed like an awfully fu good fun. It would be chaos, concluded Frown. That gorilla is a grave danger to the public. I know her better than any of you. Gertrude's a big softy. She's harmless, protested the boy. That gorilla could whip your arms clean off, bawled Batter. Then it would be Eric who'd be armless, quiped Sid. Is that supposed to be funny? demanded Frown. Just trying to light up the mood, sir. Well, don't. This l isn't a laughing matter. That gorilla destroyed its cage. It has no place in my zoo. And as for you, boy, you are a child. You don't know the first thing about these creatures. This stung Eric. He might not have been an animal expert with all facts and figures, but he did have a special connection with them, especially his dearest darling Gertrude. Bada, fetch the vet, the delightful Miss Gnarl. She can put that gorilla down. Very good, sir, replied Batter, with a self-satisfied grin as he left Frown's office. No, screamed Eric. And that will do it for chapter 11 and 12 of Codename Bananas. Now remember, you've got your questions to answer. Do complete sentences, restate the question. Remember, you can also copy and paste the question over and then change the words to make it be your answer. All right, I can't wait to see your answers. Tomorrow, we'll deal with chapter 13. Have a great day.